Hey everybody, I'm David Bott uh, from OutsideOurBubble.com. And I'm Michael Kitt from TurtleHerding.com. And, and together, together we're, we're outsider outside our turtle, turtle. What, something We made like that, that way easier, remember. Turtle bubbles. We did. It's turtle bubbles. Oh, that's right. We went with <laughs> turtle bubbles. And we're yep. not kidding about that, by the way, folks. Turtlebubbles.com is an actual URL. Not that it really takes you anywhere, but if oh, you're wondering the what the heck is turtle bubbles, that that is that is basically what happened uh, on our first test live feed. Yeah, so turtlebubbles.com, we're, yeah, anyway, that's who we are, <laughs> combined. Well, when, when Michael and I are together, we're turtlebubbles.com. Yes, <laughs> even in case, in virtually. Hey, that's right, and, and we're always, by the way, most Michael and I are usually virtual, and um, at this point, just so you're aware, uh, I am currently in Byron, New York, upstate New York, and Michael is in? Las Vegas. Fabulous, sunny, hot Las Vegas. Uh, yes. 102.6 degrees right now. <laughs> Woo wee! So we are actually literally doing this a cross country video just for your benefit. Yep. So what are and we talking about today, David? We have the technology, and because we uh, have the technology to do so. Um, yes. So thank you to a number of uh, providers, YouTube and and what have you, to make this possible. And um, by the way, Michael just did a. The right thing to say is, what are we talking about today? And you're all here is we are here to talk about doing full coach, meaning every faucet and facet of your motor coach, RO, reverse osmosis. So when you ever hear toilet. us say, yes, even the toilet. So when you hear us say RO, just so you know, RO is short for reverse osmosis, which is a which was one of two main ways water is purified for drinking. Yep. The other way being distillation, uh, which involves a lot of heat, a lot of boiling, a lot of condensation, and not works great on a submarine, but not really uh, on a smaller vessel like a motor coach. Right. So it's uh, in a motor coach fashion, you can do reverse osmosis for sure, and you can do it just like you do in a house with a, with a supplemental small tank and a mm -hmm. single tap. And, or you can do what we ended up doing. Well, Michael did it first because I've been running purification and Michael went right to reverse osmosis. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences between the two. But um, you, it doesn't mean you couldn't put in a reverse osmosis system in your motor coach that has a supplemental tank that feeds just one port on your sink, which is basically what Brendan and I were doing when we were doing purification. Um, and the water purification would be one port in the sink and also plumbed into our refrigerator uh, water tap for ice and cold water. Yeah, so you were you were actually, and I was too before this, uh, you were doing two-stage filtration and then softening, right? Uh, that is correct. But then purification after that. Yep. So um, we were both doing that before. Uh, reverse osmosis takes it kind of to the next level. Um, so general filtration the the canister filters that you get for your coach you'll usually get those down to say five micron is pretty typical um, and it could be either just a sediment filter or an activated charcoal filter that does sediment and some polishing and, and, and yes it, it just be aware that most motor coaches and rvs come with a single cartridge system already installed in the coach yeah well typically. usually it's a dual system typically it's a dual carbon slash filter that's one mm -hmm. canister yeah so those go down to about five micron and if they're activated carbon then it'll help with the taste a little bit it'll take some of the chemical uh side of the the flavorings out um but generally speaking five micron is is what you typically run with with full flow coach uh water filtration so we're going a little bit different than that at this point. Um, what I would like to first touch upon, because most of our viewers, Michael, uh, know how Brendan and I have been processing water for since we got the motor coach. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of our longtime viewers know that we use water purification. So what I'd like to touch on first is the differences between RO and water purification. What do you think? Okay, sure. So um, with the... They both operate on a similar principle as far as removing particulate fil or particulate out of the water, um, 
but the RO is a much finer grain system. Um, so, do, do, should we put up the diagram or and and kind of well, go not, through? Not or do you want to? Well, we will in one second. Just let me really quick because sure. we're not going to we're not here to talk about water purification. But I want to let you know that the way that we were doing it in the past is basically the water enters the motor coach through the RV spigot, or excuse me, the 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 uh, RV park spigot, if you will. Mm -hmm. So the water comes into the coach. At that point, it normally passes in a normal RV. It passes through a, a combination filter and our and carbon a carbon filter and sediment filter all in one. Um, what would normally happen for us, for those of you who've seen my past videos, is water would come into the coach, get passed across to the other side of the coach, go through a uh, sediment filter, go through a carbon block filter, and then go into a water softener, and that would then feed the back into the main coach. So all the taps are then at that point uh, going through two filters plus the water softener on top of that, and then after that, what we would have for our drinking water is a water purifier. Now, a water purifier goes goes much further than the filtration system. A water purifier is actually small enough and dense enough in regards to how the filters are made to actually remove impurities in the water right down to um, uh, biohazards, if you will, um, uh, um, bacteria and virus level. And then after that, as it passes through, we would also, and Michael's doing was doing the same, would pass it through a UV light filter, which I did a blog post on uh, not, not too far back. And that was as the coronavirus came out, the UV filter kicked in uh, and we went with that, um, which is UV standing for ultraviolet, which basically kills mostly anything that goes through that. <laughs> yep. So, um, so because we had a single filtration system for our drinking water, that would mean that our water that Brenda and I drank was, and, and Loki also, would come from a tap on our kitchen sink that was there just for water only. But we also plumbed it into our refrigerator for cold water and for ice. So that when you buy bottled water, if you look at the bottled water, usually it says one of two things. It says processed by reverse osmosis or processed by water purification. So our coach was actually running bottled water level water purification system. The difference is between purified water and reverse osmosis water and making it is the water waste. Where, where mm -hmm. purified water has zero water waste, reverse osmosis has waste because it's a self-cleaning system, if you will. Yep. So anything to anything to add to that, Michael? <laughs> Sorry. No, you you did a great job with it. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, looked like we had a little stutter in the video there a second ago, uh, but it seems we're back doing well now. So I don't know if that was just on my end or if that went all the that way. That might through, have been on your anyway. end because I did not see anything go wrong on my uh, on my um, my streaming end. It tells tells me we have an excellent connection according to YouTube. Okay. Great. All right. So, so, um, so basically, so that's a little bit about water purification. Like I said, bottled water comes in one of two forms. Usually if you look at the bottle or spring water, that's the other mm -hmm. one, spring water. Um, and I put that in quotes for a reason. <laughs> uh, but in any case, usually it's reverse osmosis or water purified. Brent and I, uh, would have water purified drinking water. We always have had it in every coach we have had, and that was actually uh, Genealogy uh, is the company that made that product, and they're used worldwide in airplanes, the the U.S. Armed Forces, and things like that. Um, their filters are so good that you can actually siphon water out of a puddle, a mud puddle, and it would siphon the water out, and when it would come out, it would be pure, clear as glass water. Um, and that's what we would run in the coach. But now, <laughs> since we got the Tesla Model X, mind you, we decided that we wanted to go reverse osmosis. And Michael had already done the legwork on that. Yep. So um, I'll switch over and show the diagram of the system and we'll kind of talk through. Oh, okay. Um, so from here, the water comes in through the city water connection. Uh, goes through a cutoff valve so that we can isolate the system and do any maintenance or anything without uh, having to go all the way across the other side of the coach and turn things off. 
Um, because we feed it, as you'll see, we feed the we feed the water off the hose reel to the other side of the coach to, yep. and we don't have this in our main wet bay. Right. Yeah. So this is on the other side of the coach where we have space to to do this. Uh, it enters in and goes through a five micron filter, then a one micron, and then a one half micron. So these three stage filtration already gets it down to a um, less dissolved solid level or uh, less uh, particulate matter than what the normal uh, RV filter that comes with your coach would or what you would normally have um, you know, in line with your, your water line or anything like that. This is already way more pure than that. Uh, from right. here, we have two paths. Uh, if something's going on with the RO system and we need to just pressurize the coach and get water to the coach, we can open this bypass valve and that then takes the extra filtered city water and provides it straight to the, RV, the RV's water system. Um, again, that's normally closed, uh, but it is an option in case we need to, uh, to use that. And be aware that also, after, when you're passing it through these three filters, especially the, the half micron, um, the more dense the filter the more it can take mm -hmm. out for example five micron one micron 0.5 that will also reduce your water pressure yes, so your incoming pressure might be exactly the flow rate that's what i meant thank you michael the flow yeah. rate coming in so for example if the park is giving you 40 psi what might come if, if you're going through all of these what you might end up getting out at the other side is only 30 or 35 psi because the filters are so dense because they're yep. there to remove particles they're going to cause restriction yeah and so if you normally turn on your faucet in the rv and you have like really good flow you know you could fill up a glass of water in a couple of seconds coming through all of this, it may take closer to 10 or 15 seconds or 30 seconds even, um, depending on the state of these filters as well. So Yes. As yep. the filters age and are used more and more, they clog, just like any yep. filter, air filter or what have you, they clog because that's what they're doing. They're blocking particles. And because of that, um, they will reduce flow rate. That's for sure. Yeah. And Good point, we'll Michael. talk about Good the point. maintenance. We'll talk about the maintenance side of it a little bit later. So, um, so then, uh, with this normally being closed, the water comes down through this solenoid uh, control valve and then goes into a boost pump, which boosts the pressure back up to 60 PSI, which is the optimal pressure for these reverse osmosis membranes. So the way- Now I'd like to point out something, Michael. Your mm -hmm. graph is perfect, by the way, because you see a nice thick line for the, for the filter the water coming in over there uh, but then it goes to a thin line that's because yep. you're changing we're actually changing the size of the water line that goes into the membranes yeah so this line here coming in on on our coaches is half inch pex tubing and uh, then when it comes out and splits off at this t we pass half inch pex back across the coach to pressurize the coach if we need to through this bypass uh, but when we come down to the solenoid and boost pump and into the membranes, it's uh, what's commonly called quarter poly, which is quarter inch, uh, like your ice maker or water maker uh, line for your refrigerator. Same stuff. Ex exactly. And because of the reduced pressure and that RO systems require a certain pressure amount to operate properly or efficiently, mm -hmm. that's where the booster pump comes in to bring the pressure back up. But because yep. the volume is a lot less, meaning that the caliper of the size of the pipe that we're putting it through is a lot less, um, we can easily, we easily have enough water volume to pump that, to get that pressure up to where we need it to work yep. properly with the membrane. Yeah, so there's actually two sides uh, to this membrane. There's the bypass side, which flows straight through, and then there's the uh, fresh water side where this pressurized water literally forces its way across what's called a membrane. Um, that, and the membrane has extremely small holes in it. Uh, basically, the design is so that the hole size is not much bigger than the size of a water molecule itself. So anything yeah, the bigger molecule, than a water molecule. I mean, that is a that is yeah. a, amazing to think about that. I mean, we're actually pushing molecule sizes of water, H2O pure molecules, forcing it through that membrane, and it's all we get out. Yep, exactly. So we actually go even a step further. Uh, normally with reverse osmosis systems, as David alluded to earlier, 
there is a, uh, a waste side of the, the system. And with typical reverse osmosis production, the ratio of wastewater to freshwater is actually really high. It's for every gallon of fresh that you produce, you produce three gallons of wastewater. So that, that's extremely wasteful. So we wanted to get higher production and lower waste output. So what we did is we took the output of the wastewater output of the first membrane and fed it into the input of the second membrane. And then, uh, so it goes through another stage of filtration and we get more freshwater production out of that. Uh, and then the wastewater side of that comes out and goes through um, what's called a flow restrictor. Because without the flow restrictor, it would be just a straight shot on the waste side of the fresh or uh, the um, membrane. So it would have no way to go through the membrane whatsoever. Yeah, it would just go be no right, pressure, just right past yeah. it. Yep. So uh, the flow restrictor actually limits the uh, amount of water that can flow through it, which keeps the pressure up on the membrane, which allows the water to push itself across the membrane. Then out of the fresh side of both membranes, we combine those together and send that right out to our freshwater tank. And it literally goes right into our freshwater tank. Now, because yep. of this configuration that we have running, we are producing anywhere from 150 to 200 gallons per hour, or excuse me, per day, excuse me, per, per day, day yes. <laughs> of water. Um, so for those of you going, oh my gosh, that's such a small amount of tubing, and therefore, you know, you're not, you're not producing a lot of water into the tank. That's true. We're not. It takes yep. time to produce that water. And yes, there is waste involved, which is another reason we originally chose um, to go with water purification. Now, again, the reason I switched from water purification to reverse osmosis is because, well, the geek side of me. And and again, this was, <laughs> I hate to say it, it's again, it comes, Michael cost me money. Um, <laughs> with the... the the Tesla Model X, I, I, as you guys know, I use DI water, deionized uh, uh, water, water deionization in order to filter any water coming in, go through a, a DI system in order to wash our motor coach or and now wash the Tesla. Well, because I find myself washing the Tesla more than I ever washed the Jeep in my life, uh, I would go through the DI resin a lot quick, quick a lot more quickly than I would mm -hmm. uh, that I normal use. The good news is the reverse osmosis water, I pump that through the DI resin because the DI, the reverse osmosis water is already quote unquote clean water. Um, and yep. for example, and I think I don't think you mentioned this yet, Michael, my water here, and I don't know if you know what yours is there. My water here coming into the coach is 140 parts per million of, of contaminant, um, particles, solid. what have you. Yep. And then and then coming out after the reverse osmosis process, it's two parts per million. Yeah. Yes. And mine here in Las Vegas is uh, about 500, 550 parts per million coming in from the park. And then uh, my produced water is at about uh, 10 to 12 parts per million. So a little higher than yours, but my membranes are a little older as well. And then, so the good news here for, for, and the reason I wanted to do this was because now I can run that water from the tank into the DI filters, which will then last a very long time without me needing yep. to buy new resin. And uh, even though the, the reverse osmosis water, because it's so low in, in particulates, um, I literally could wash the car with that because it's actually, mm -hmm. you can go up to about 15, 10 to 15 parts per million uh, in water before you start to see spotting. So yeah. um, it, it, the, the RO water can actually do that. And you'll see in a few minutes here, when we bring up some screenshots of our, of our installs, you'll see um, uh, how we're doing that. But yep. yeah, so that is, that's what pushed me over the, over the hump to go to reverse <laughs> osmosis. A is because we can wash the rig and the car and I don't have to go through as much DI resin because I'm washing the car more than I ever washed the Jeep. Let's yep. face it. 
uh, I, <laughs> and second, now the 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 added benefit of that is I no longer have to do water softening maintenance anymore, which is depending on the area of the country we're in, could be as much as once every two weeks or, or excuse me, as much as every once a week. Yeah. If you're in Yuma, it's at least once a week. Uh, or if we're in upstate New York here, I, once every three weeks or so I would do it, um, which I don't have to do anymore. So yep. that takes care of that whole thing, not to mention the entire coach the entire coach is reverse osmosis water. So no matter what tap we use, we know we have clean, pure water. Yeah. And it, it also helps inside, like um, our showers, whenever we take a shower, we do what we call a flood rinse, which is we take the wand and we let the water run down all the surfaces and we make sure that it's cascading all the way down and uh, it keeps the shower extremely clean. Uh, yes. no water spots on any of the chrome or the glass or anything. So it, it helps in that too. Um, so, yeah, so it's really nice all the way through from start, start to finish, not to mention that you're, you're closed. You use less water, just like a water softener, you use less water detergent, uh, laundry detergent, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, and your soap is a lot foamier when you soap up, but that's, yeah. you know, you'll yeah, notice things then... like that immediately. Yeah, so we do actually have two questions already. Uh, one is, what is the taste with two-stage RO? Um, the taste of the water, it actually doesn't really have much of a taste, um, yeah. which is contrary to what you would get with, like, mineral or spring water. Um, to me, it, it's great. I, I drink water exclusively uh, unless it's coffee. So I guess that's still water with a little bit of something else. But anyway... Um, <laughs> so I, I'm exclusively water. I take, I drink no sodas, no, uh, you know, nothing else, uh, no energy drinks or any of that. So, uh, it tastes really great to me and it's so pure that the ice, um, our ice is way more clear than it was before. Uh, our That's ice used funny. to be yeah. re really cloudy. Uh, and then the second question is, uh, does the water feel soft? Not really. Um, you you don't get that slipperiness that you get with over softened water. Um, it actually rinses and it's, you feel squeaky clean, uh, which to me is a better feeling anyway. Well, let me, let me, I can actually comment mo uh, on both of those a little bit also is that um, with, with the, as far as the taste goes, I actually, after I did the reverse osmosis system switch over, I had store-bought bottled water I had purified water in a bottle that it, from our system, and then I made a bottle of RO water, all of them with the labels removed, but I marked the bottles so I knew which one was which, put them in the refrigerator overnight, and then the next day, I had Brenda taste each one of them and tell me which one she preferred. She could not tell the difference between the bottled water, store-bought, and the RO, RO water, and nice. or the purified water. Yeah, and... So, um... Actually, I misread the comment. Uh, it wasn't about the taste. It was about the waste with two-stage. Um, so with oh. two-stage RO, it actually cuts the waste in half. Uh, so instead oh, yes. of being three to one waste to fresh, it's at now 1.5 to one waste to fresh. But it was still good. It was still a good misread on the question because people yes. are wondering, does it taste different? Uh, yeah. Again, when you buy bottled water, if you look at the label, go ahead, go grab one out of the fridge right now or wherever. Look at the label. It's 10 to 1. It's going to say processed by reverse osmosis or processed by pure water purification. Those are the yep. two main things that are used because there's not a lot of springs in the world that people own. Um, uh, so in any case, pure water springs, that is. And, and sometimes you'll see that they, it, it actually will say added minerals back mm -hmm. in the reverse osmosis system for taste. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, so we, because people we have are another used question. to that. Yeah. We have another question about the uh, duration, like how long do the membranes last? Um, I've had my system five years and I've replaced the membranes once so far. And that was at about the two and a half year mark. Uh, there's also other and maintenance that, that you can do. And and that also might go is probably why your, your RO, uh, your parts per million is higher than normal. Yeah. I, I'm really close to needing to replace mine again because I'm, I'm really at that second two and a half year mark. Um, and the cartridges aren't expensive. By the no, way, speaking all. of expensive and where we got things from, um, all of our stuff we purchased from the RV water filter store, our um, RV 
Um, yeah, rvwaterfilterstore.com. <laughs> there we go. There we go. RV Water Filter Store. Uh, RV Water Filter Store is a mom and pop company. Yep. Literally. They're not sponsoring this video at all, by the way. They don't know they, we're doing this. They don't know we're doing this. We, 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 we They don't know we're going to let them know where we bought stuff. But this is the exact kit we bought right here, plus yep. one option, which adds, adds the second membrane, which is right there. That's what it looks like. And yep. um, that's the additional option at $94 to add the second membrane. Understand, when I say it's a mom and pop, pop shop, when you order this, they build it to order. So if you order a RO system with the second 75 gallon per minute, per day, excuse me, per day membrane, they build it. And then when you receive it, you yep. receive everything pre-built, ready to go. Yep. So yes. this, is, this is where Michael bought his from. This is where I bought mine from. Um, yeah, and they're really this, knowledgeable. The exact kit. Yep, they're really knowledgeable. Um, there's, you could technically put this together for less money on Amazon yes. or something else. Um, but these, the, the people that run the RV water filter store, um, they really know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about, and they can help you decide if a RO system is better for you, or a water softener is sufficient, or whatever else, um, and really answer any questions you have. They, they really know their stuff. Um, it, it recently actually between when I ordered five years ago and when you ordered yours, it changed ownership. Um, but yes, the, the new owners actually worked for the old owners while they were, you know, while they were still running the store. So they're still extremely knowledgeable. In other words, they've been involved in the RV industry actually as long as Brendan and I have been doing this since 2008 at least because yep. I met Rick, the original owner, at it, at the first trade show we went to, and that's where I bought my first RV water filter system um, that wasn't part of the motor coach, which was a separate system, was from them yep. long ago. So they're still, they've been around helping the RV industry for a long time. So sure. this is where we bought ours. We have no links for you or anything like that for discounts or anything. They didn't nope. know we were doing this, um, but we just thought we'd let you know that these guys, and the reason we're letting you know is because if you have any questions or what have you, these would be the guys to ask. Yeah, very much so, rvwaterfilterstore.com. Um, notice too, there are less expensive options. Uh, if you notice the title here, the Super Deluxe 2A package. Um, the reason why we went with this particular option is uh, not only does it do the three-stage filtration, uh, well, not only is it RO, but it does the three-stage filtration ahead of time, so your RO membranes last a lot longer. And it also includes this control valve and the boost pump. And it includes one of those little float switches that David's showing up here. I'll, I'll uh... Hey, go full screen there, Michael. Yep. So yeah, this is the main reason you want the deluxe kit right here. And what this is, is this goes into your fresh water tank at the mm -hmm. high level. So basically when your fresh water tank, when the RO system is running and it's filling up the tank with water and the water, this is a float. When the water comes up and gets to 100%, it will turn off the water pump automatically. When the water drops back down, it'll automatically turn the pump back on to make more fresh water. So therefore you yep. always have water. So this is part of the deluxe kit also. Yep. Now, the reason David is holding that and it's not installed <laughs> and it's not in his tank my coach. <laughs> is because uh, we did something a little the, different. Um, <laughs> I might be a little bit of a geek in case someone yeah, out there yeah, doesn't know that. Little, just a little. Just a just little. Just a little. So um, I built a control system that actually taps into the spider control system uh, and allows reading of the tanks because the tank levels are already being read very accurately by the spider system. So this contraption reads in those values and uses this relay in place of that float switch to uh, control the RO production. Yeah, so, so instead of putting a hole in the side of our tank, we decided to use what was already installed on the tank, the tank readings yep. themselves. Understand this is, a, this is installed in I need 2015 or newer Tiffin coach. The 2014, even though we have a 2014, did not have that capability. I added yep. that capability separately uh, on my own um, to in order to give me the tank readings. Yep. I mean, we had the sea level gauges, 
which all the Tiffins have, the sea level gauges, but it didn't have the CAN bus interface, which I required in order to put it onto the CAN bus. So I, yep. I, I contacted sea level and switched those out and I ran wiring and stuff like that. And I got a special board from Spider Systems to allow us to integrate the readings. Yeah, so 2015 or newer Tiffin RV could go this route. Um, yes. I am not but selling these to. boards. <laughs> I no, am not making no, these no, for Michael people. Um, I, uh, I, I will be posting the code online. So if you are handy with a soldering iron and, and know something about lo these little microcomputers, you can do that. But this is by no means required. You can use the float the switch. Uh, so that little float switch works just fine. Um, we just went a little bit geekier route. Uh, well, that's so just because it's us. Yes. There's another you know, question about tur turtle bubbles and all. Yes, turtle bubbles. <laughs> There's a question about where does the wastewater go? So we have two ah, yes. options. Um, depending on which of these valves is open, uh, we can either send the wastewater, which I incorrectly have labeled as brine. Brine generally refers to salty water, so it's not water. entirely accurate. Uh, but the wastewater goes through this valve and into the gray tank, which is what we do 99% of the time. Uh, but if we need to, we can actually have it pass through this valve instead and go to the ground. We just have a little hose uh, that sticks out and, and dr dribbles it right on the ground. And understand, um, now some people like us, we keep our gray tank closed all the time. So uh, when it gets to about ab above 75%, we open it so it will flush out just like a normal black tank flush would in order to pull the heavier particulate matters and hopefully I should say, pull the heavier particulate matters out mm -hmm. during that flush procedure. So we leave ours open all the time. Most people closed. who put these in, most people leave their gray tank open all the time. And so it's yeah. not an issue. You, and you'll see in a second here with our photos, how it's plumbed in. But as Michael said, how I'm currently doing it because we have it closed all the time is I have a ho I have the uh, the outport going down out um, out the bottom of our motor coach and into a rock bed basically which is what we're sitting on here so the water yep. just drains into the ground as normal. Yeah, and um, what I found because I've been using mine for five years now, um, after about two years I had one of those tank cleaner guys come out and he cleaned both tanks right the gray tank and the black tank and when he cleaned the gray tank literally nothing came out so um what i found is that that constant flow of that wastewater you know kind of carrying itself across the bottom of the tank helps to keep it clean without having to cycle up and down so um, for us i'm i'm perfectly comfortable leaving the tank open and uh letting it fit, you know take care of itself basically so michael let's show the install videos or photos, excuse me, sure. photos. We don't have video. Yeah, so um, here is the before <laughs> picture for David. Um, yeah, for, you can see for some of those, some of those people, some of you out there have seen photos like this and videos of this already. And this, this, what you're looking at is, uh, is nothing new to you. But this is how it looked before I did the reverse osmosis system. Yep. And so as David was talking about earlier, there's his two-stage filtration that he had before, and then this tank in the back was his river or his uh, water softener, and then this little canister he used for uh, regenerating the water softener. So he would yes, I would I would use that canister right there to put salt in because I didn't want to pull all this stuff out to get the water softener out because the water softener yep. is a big tank, and so I would I would put the salt in there to regenerate. Um, or the resin in the water softener, which you see in the background. The big yep. blue tanks you see on the left-hand side, that's my DI system for my, my coach cleaning and my car cleaning. That's my DI water tanks, um, which does, that's a simple chuck system. And what you'll see, um, all of that was replaced by this. So basically yep. what we ended up doing was I was able to use smaller DI tanks because I don't have to use as much DI resin anymore. And what you're and, and on the on the right hand side there is the that's the complete RO system right there. Yep. That whole thing. Now the gauges I added of because I wanted the monitor yeah. pressure. Yeah. I wanted the monitor pressure and everything. And then what happens is after it passes through the entire RO system, the the water that comes out, the clean water that goes into our tank first goes through right there at the top, a UV light. 
Now that will yep. kill any viruses or bacteria that are remaining in the water after the process. And then that water goes into my fresh water tank. Yep. And I have a tap right there, which you can see hanging down. Michael was kind of pointing at it for a second there. Um, there's a tap of the coming off oh. the UV light, Michael. Oh, you can zoom in. Right here. <laughs> yeah, there's a tap right there. So if I ever wanted to check my flow rates and things like that and or get some, you know, I don't know, check water or whatever, I can just get it right out of that valve right there. Yep. But that valve, as you can see, just runs across and it goes as that that comes out of the top there and it goes over to the other side of that bay. And on the other side of that bay is where your tanks are located. Yep. And uh, before at least, we show at that least part, in our coaches. Yeah. So our coaches are actually backwards to each other. David's um, compartment for all this is forward of his freshwater and other tanks. Mine is aft of that. But uh, before we switch off of this photo, here's the tube for oh, yeah, yes. when the wastewater good, good descend point. through to the ground under the coach. Uh, yeah, and so those we... asking about the wastewater, there's my wastewater line. There's my valve right there. So yep. I can switch the valve between that one and another one. And it either goes out the bottom of the coach or it goes into the gray tank currently. However, my plan is to run that to run a line over to the Y adapter on the outgoing hose assembly for the sewer hose and tap a hole, a small hole right into that and put the line right into that so it can just go out the regular hose assembly um, without having to open the gray tank or, or anything yeah. like that. That that's my, next, in, that's my next step. Yeah, a lot of people in RV parks will come knock on your door if they see something trickling out of the bottom of your coat. Yeah, so. well, because they're concerned. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you see this water coming out. Hey, there's water coming out the bottom of your coach. Well, that line, just so you know, goes all the way down to the ground, hits a rock bed, and disappears. So you yep. can't really tell I'm, I'm, I'm producing wastewater. And then this is my installs. Um, and you can see my filter's a little older. I I'm, I'm probably need to change the filter set on this as well. But um, very similar setup, uh, just a little bit different arrangement. Um, three-stage filtration, the two RO membranes, and then I have um, uh, total dissolved solid meters actually embedded into the lines like David does. The output of that then comes through the UV filter and then goes over into our uh, fresh tank. Uh, I actually don't have any more the option to run mine to the ground because I found I, I just never used it. So um, I just put mine into the gray tank and, and that works fine for us. Um, but look, we're person, twinsies. We got yeah. the DI system the same. We got the same water pump. Look at that. We're twinsies. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, see all of Michael's wires and everything? Okay. So if you switch back to mine, I have my wires all nicely hidden. There's the yeah. meter right there. Point point to the meter, Michael. There's yep. the meter so right, there. right there. All those wires just go to that meter right there. Yep. So I actually have two meters, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> I need to tidy my wires up. Um, so yeah, show them the, uh, show them a shot of the side of the coach removed, showing our tanks. Sure. So the tanks look like this. And now these um, are so, on, understand these are 45 foot Tiffin Allegro buses. Yeah. So uh, David has a 2014 Allegro bus 45 LP. And I have a 2016 Allegro Bus 45 OP. Uh, so they're very similar uh, in a lot of ways, just the floor plan is slightly different. Um, and, but both of our tank side setups look basically identical, uh, even though one is a little yes. further back than the other. So uh, this bottom tank here, that's the freshwater tank. And you can see the water level there. And this is the um, sea, level sea level gauge. gauge sensor yeah um and then these tanks there's actually two here you can see there's a split right here in the middle this bigger tank on the left is the gray water tank and there's the sea level sensor for it and then the smaller tank is the black tank there's a sea level sensor and then there's these two sensors uh on our coaches we have two bathrooms uh so we have a mid bath where the toilet is directly above the tank like most rb installs and then our rear toilet uh, is actually a macerator toilet that pumps through a smaller line. And the macerator toilet uses these sensors to determine if it's safe to actually flush the toilet or to give you a warning that your black tank is, is near full. Yeah, so, if you get to the red zone, your toilet will not flush. Yeah, you can actually press and hold the button for like 10 seconds and it'll override it. Enforce anyway. it. 
right? Yeah. But but for the most part, if it turns red, you're, you're it's telling you, uh, dude, you need to empty your tanks. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so this is what it looks like before we did anything. We just pulled the panel off. This is the gravity fill that goes to that uh, port behind the door on the side of your RV. Uh, most people probably never open that door, but that it's a gravity fill uh, hole. And then this is what it looks like after. Not much change, but the changes are very subtle. So for the fresh water, we each drilled a hole in the side of our gravity fill line, and we put the RO output line into this, and then we use some silicone to seal it up and a zip tie to hold it up in place so that there's oh! no stress on this. Oh, you forgot the zip That's tie? That's what I forgot, the zip tie. <laughs> Oh, well, David's got a panel oh, pulling well. in his future. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I forget why. I just, when you, when you zoomed in on it, I'm like, oh, I forgot the zip tie. Oh. <laughs> Luckily, he's okay. not moved yet, so there's not been any bouncing of that line or anything. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Okay. And then if we come over here, these two white tubes, these are the vent lines for the tanks that go up to the roof-mounted vents. So for the gray, uh, for the wastewater we drilled a hole in the side of this gray vent line. We plumbed that in and then silicone that up so that it's uh, nice and sealed. And out of frame a little bit is another zip tie up there, which David probably also forgot. Oh, yes, yes, I did, Michael. Thank you very much. You move on, move on. Okay, okay. So the last side um, on mine, this is a picture of my install. So uh, my tanks are actually forward of my RO, or of my RO system uh, and the bay that that's in. So I ran the supply line in across between these two sets of tanks and then up and over and into that, um, that space. And then earlier I mentioned the ability to bypass the RO system and pressurize the coach if need be. And that's what this blue line is. It, it, that is the return back to the other side. And we'll take and a, what do you mean a by look at yeah, what he means by that is when we come off of our hose reel, so the you got the hose reel on the coach. When we come off our hose reel, right there, we we tap in off of that and before the check valve, um, and we go to the other side of the coach. And so we, as Michael is showing you here, so off the hose reel, we tap off, and it goes to the other side of the coach, the white line there. And then yep. when it comes back, the blue line goes that that is that goes back to the original feed of the check valve into the coach. Yep. So uh, this lets you pressurize the coach again if you need to to bypass the RO for some reason. Maybe your freshwater pump dies because you're using now with this system, you're using your yes. freshwater fresh tank pump all the time. Uh, Good point. So if yes. that fails, number one, you should have a spare. Number two, uh, this would allow you to continue to pressurize the coach, um, albeit without RO, but you would still be able to use the water system in the coach Yes. Uh, we also, both of us, have done other modifications. Um, so we actually tee off of that, go through a, a controllable valve, <laughs> and then up to our black tank flush. Uh, oh, so come we don't on. Have to, You're going to give away all like... our secrets. We're going to get all these questions from everybody. <laughs> um, we're also running out of topics then to talk about in future videos. But uh, I, I know. know. We'll, we'll... I mean, they're going to say, what the heck is that thing? It's yes, we have valves that automatically open and close the flush valves when we dump our tanks. Yep. Yes, we're not kidding about this. It's not there. Yes, that's how geeky we are as tiny bubble, <laughs> turtle bubble people. Turtle bubbles, what yes. <laughs> that's a Don't... turtle bubbles. So, so anyways, there's what... the RO system. Yeah, this is what it looks like when you get it in from the RV water filter store. Uh, this is the inlet for the water coming in from the street. Goes through the three filter stages. On the output, um, there's a, another adapter that comes off. And then you have the T. And then one part of the T goes in here on this RO membrane. Uh, and then goes through the other RO membrane and, and out, just like our diagram showed earlier. And uh, there it is in parts uh, because it's easier <laughs> to get in the bay and screw to the wall without those uh, RO membranes on top of it. But uh, that's that's what it looks like before you you get it put in. It's not that bad. It looks it looks men menacing and everything, but it's not. It's right. uh, no, it's the hardest really thing is just getting the plumbing set up. You know, just getting yep. the plumbing where you need it, and then uh, off you go. Um, 
so yeah, the the doing RO, Bernie and I, the, the, the downside is you're always running off of your fresh water tank and you're always running off your water pump. So a question we had in our other video that we made, Michael and I, was what spare parts do we carry in our motor coach? One of the things we both carry for sure is an extra water pump. Yep. So extra water pump. Um, I also carry an extra boost pump because if that goes I out, do too. You, you stop producing water. Um, and I carry a set of filters. I don't carry a set of RO membranes, but uh, no. they're cheap enough. I probably should do that as well. Uh, and the filters we are questions. cheap to carry anyways. Yep. I have some. We have yeah. some questions here in chat. Um, okay, what do you got? So, let's see here. Let me scroll back up. Uh, since all the water comes from the tank, do you use the pump all the time? Yes, we do. We just answered And that. did we yes. upgrade the pumps? Yes, I did. Yes. And yes, I did. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I've gone through about four different types of pumps because I wasn't really happy with the pumps that usually come in uh, motor coaches. So I actually now use, um, it's more of an industrial pump that is rated for, uh, I think, 80 PSI, but I have that dialed back to 65. Uh, but it also is rated for seven gallons per minute of flow rate. So it's, it's a much higher flow pump. Um, let's see asked if we use a squeegee in the shower not anymore we used to not anymore we used to it's it, don't have to now with the ro we as michael mentioned earlier all we do is we rinse off the shower walls and the uh, doors and it it dries spot spotless if you will yep um, um somebody asked it in regards to the photos that they were looking at was that our aqua hot back there and if so how do we service it well none of that's really in the way only thing i have to take out and michael has to take out of that whole entire picture can you go back to my photo for a sure. second michael yep let me get that pulled up here sure uh the only thing that we have to take out of my photo of my bay in order to service the aqua hot is the pump the the, the yep. pressure washer that is actually a 1600 psi pressure washer i have built into the motor coach michael has the same similar system um and yep. all that the only yeah and so really that's the only thing in the way because the top cover of the aqua hot comes off and then you just twist it sideways and you can bring it out nothing else has to get removed out of there in order to service the aqua hot yeah now if you really wanted to um both of us used fittings that we can quickly disassemble so um, yes. They're all thumb tight, hand tight fittings, so we can, you know, close a valve, take disconnect that fitting, and pull the system out if we really needed to get access in there for something else. But um, for routine for, maintenance, for the most part, it's routine yeah. maintenance is not an issue. But that was a yep. good question to ask because somebody noticed the aqua hot back there and wondering how we serviced it. That was a question yep. that you were going to get up to. Is is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where does the wasted water go? Uh, mine goes into the gray tank all the time. David uses gray mine. ore outside on the ground. And let's see. Water for water purification now. Marine grade Acuva system went that route because of space. Does this take up the same amount of space? and uh, I, the wastewater. I'm not sure with that with the particular system you mentioned. I'm not sure. Our canister, marine-wise, the uh, genealogy system, the canister was only this big. It literally is a small, small canister. Um, and that would be, and, and it's made for boats or RVs, the one I mm -hmm. bought. So yours is likely the same. Uh, it's they, I, The one I would recommend now is made by the same company, but it's the Aquapure. Um, which is what I think you might be referring to, which is a quick on and off canister. You don't have, it's not a clamshell canister like we currently have um, that we no longer really use, but yep. um, that is the system that we had. And that's the system we always recommended only because they were the only ones certified to remove a certain um, um, uh, bacteria from the water that would actually affect animals. Uh, in fact, we were in, when we were in, um, Yuma or Exona, there's a warning that don't let your pets drink the water um, because there is a certain bacteria in the water that will yep. actually hurt them. And so I l immediately looked up on our uh, on the uh, on the spec sheet for the filtration system, and that bacteria was specifically mentioned as being removed by the water purifier. So yeah. um, and that was cool. which actually leads me right into the next question. Someone asked if we still use the UV, and yes. Uh, both yes. of us actually have two RV lights now. 
uh, one on the output of our RO system before it goes into the freshwater tank as an attempt to keep the freshwater tank as bacteria and pathogen free as possible. And then on the output of our freshwater pump system, uh, we also have another uh, UV there light. So this one is the one in my bay. David is almost identical. Actually, it's an identical system. Yep. Same, uh, just, se se identical setup. Yep. So Except your uh, valves were in a different location. So mine is up higher. Yes. Yours is down lower. That's, a, that's it. Yep. So out of the um, pump, the freshwater pump comes into this sanitizer, comes through, uh, gets sanitized by the UV, and then goes back out the blue line back to the rest of the coach understand because of the way that it's set up it's actually getting sanitized twice because one yes. it goes through the reverse osmosis system which also goes through the uv light and then it goes into the tank and then when we pump when we use our pump it goes to another uv light yep uh let's see looking for more questions here david's filters are clear and i have two white ones one clear um no specific reason i would have preferred clear ones but at the time i didn't think to ask I actually ordered them that way. There's actually a option on their website to order with clear, all clear tanks. And I think it was $10 to do it. Yeah. Yeah. If I'd, if I'd known that was an option, I would have gotten all clear. Uh, it's just easier to see the state of the filter and, and know if it's time to fill, to uh, clean them out. But I will say you're very observant. <laughs> very much. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, Aqua hot. Yep. We talked about that. Hi, Michael from Florida, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, specs on the water pump that you both use. So, uh, David, I'll let you talk about your pump first. Uh, my pump, shoot, did expect that question. Uh, my <laughs> my pump is the, uh, uh, oh, gosh, now i got to look it up. Jeez. Um, just bear with me one second really quick here. And I think I will you tell have you... the um, AquaJet. Um, crap, I, uh, I have, yes, I have the Remco. I, I'm currently using the Remco 55 AquaJet ARV, um, which is a variable speed pump. So basically, based on uh, water demand use, it mm -hmm. will actually speed up and slow down the pump based on the water demand. So if I turn on a spigot at the sink and then Brenda turns one on in, I'll get so much pressure and then Brenda will turn one on in the bathroom, for example, it'll speed the pump up to keep the pressure demand right there. It's all built into this pump. And I got those yep. on, on Amazon. It's like a $200 pump, uh, but that's, that's so, the Remco 55 AquaJet ARV, AquaJet RV series water pump. Yep. And Michael. And, um, this is the one that I got, which is uh, Seaflow. It is not a variable speed pump. Uh, so this is not something that is a drop-in replacement. Uh, if you try to do a drop-in replacement, you will actually burn out this little uh, control relay very, very quickly. Uh, so I also added a DC motor controller that is variable speed and uh, tied it in a little differently. So um, this is what yeah, I use now. Yeah, don't go there. Don't go there. No, it's <laughs> it's more involved. Um, but uh, oh gosh, a much don't go there, Michael. Rate. Just don't even, don't even. <laughs> this is not made for RV use, uh, and right. Michael had to do some special modifications to make it work. Yep. Yeah. Which are going to be way one. overkill. Yeah. <laughs> Aqua Jet RV. Not uh, that so I'm saying gonna... it's bad, Michael. I'm just saying it's oh, different, and it's not for the normal RVer by any stretch of the imagination. No, no, no. Um, Oh. So yeah, here is the one that David uses. Um, so it's uh, Rep Remco, or uh, there's another name brand um, that actually makes the pump, and then Remco relabels it. But it's the same pump. Hey, that's interesting. Your price shows differently than my price online. My price currently uh, shows the one I pulled up was two oh nine. Yeah, the one I pulled up was different pictures. Oh, okay. But oh, I, there's the two I had also, one. There it is. Yeah. You can see I had already purchased this one as well, historically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yes, so, I own two of those. One is a backup because it's a quick, very quick, easy replacement if it burns out for whatever reason. Yep. So, uh, let's see. What other questions do we have here? Uh, previous sanitation uh, setup. Dave, I, 
I'm reading one that says, "With David, with your previous uh, sanitation setup, did you did you have water spots in the shower?" Um, Brenda answered that. It looks like Brent. Oh, Brenda answered that um, online. She we used a squeegee just because it wasn't it wasn't purified water or any, I mean purified water is different than RO water and from DI water. First off, you can drink RO water. You cannot drink DI water. If you no. drink DI water, it is so pure, it, it, it's it's pure H2O when it comes out. Literally pure, pure water. And you were thinking, oh, that's great. But no, 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 that's not great. No. Because it's so pure that if you were to drink that, it's like distilled water, it will actually suck the minerals out of your body. And it's not good for you. It'll actually yeah. do reverse it, it of actually, what it's supposed to do. Yeah, it, it actually will cause, um, uh, I'll call it, let's call it bowel distress. Yeah, um, not good things. <laughs> not not good so, things. So purified water, understand, un once again, our water softener and everything, we used that coach-wide. And so that was the main, and, and our shower mm -hmm. and everything felt great. Our water cleaning, our water, our soap, and our, and our washer and stuff was all great. Um, the... Um, but it's not but it's but it's not spotless or spot free there's still some minerals in the water so if yeah. we left it it could it could create spots on the shower um glass shower walls however our own water being ours is now down to two parts per million um it doesn't leave any spots yep um and there was a question let me see here oh is michael You're the person who developed bacteria? the alexa control yes Sorry, it's okay. Yes, I uh, I'm the guy that created Coach Proxy and uh, the Alexa integration for that. Um, the so the other thing to keep in mind, um, like David said, DI water. Um, well, let me step back to water softeners. Um, so water softeners, as David mentioned, don't actually purify the water. They actually just exchange sodium ions in place of the other hard uh, minerals. So like uh, chlorine they were, and they, they attach the minerals, they grab it and hold it. Yep. And so they it's known as a, an ion exchanger. Uh, so it, it exchanges sodium ions in place of the others. Um, the RO actually removes particulate. Um, and so it gets it very low particulate water, but it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't necessarily prevent some bacteria and some viruses, which is why we use the, the UV light. So Correct. it's important to understand if you're in a situation where you don't trust the safety of the water, RO by itself is not sufficient to make that water safe. It's, it'll However, get it. water purification is. Right. The system that David mentioned earlier um, is capable of that. And the UV light will kill bacteria and viruses as well. So that's, you can do RO plus the UV and have completely safe potable water. Um, if, you've give, if you're given a warning that the water is not safe to drink, just don't risk it. But realistically, it, it's, it's much better through we this be than fine. it would be by itself. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we would. Uh, somebody asked if, because are we running, are we running the UV light um, the second one because we're worried about bacteria or something being built up in the tank. Um, I am not. The reason I, I don't worry about that is because we run so much water, so much water is produced and used each day yep. that the tank is constantly being swapped out of water. So I don't think, I really i am not concerned about bacteria or viruses or anything like that contaminating the tank water supply whatsoever. Yeah, and for me it's, um... I'm a belt and suspenders kind of guy, or uh, as some people call gilding the lily. Um, I, I generally try to go overboard with my solutions. So um, I recognize that this system produces very clean, very pure, very drinkable water, um, but it does sit in the tank and it does pass through a pump. So technically either of those could potentially contaminate uh, with bacterial or virus load. Um, so I, yeah. I do the second UV just in case. Um, let's see what else we can just finish up here because we're now getting into uh, time-wise uh, um, a good amount of time. Yeah, we've been going um, on an hour almost, now. Almost an hour. So let's see what we can do some finishing questions here real quick. Um, is, can one you question is the whole coach the now. Uh, one question is, does the whole R coach run on RO? Yes. 
both of our coaches yes. are now pure RO end to end. Even the toilet flush water is reverse osmosis. So our toilets are squeaky clean. <laughs> no, not really. Um, uh, Bob asks, can we boondock with this setup? Uh, yes, because boondocking in its, in its real form, you are not hooked up to water or electric. So you would basically, when you go out to boondock, you would be having to fill up your fresh tank beforehand before you go out to boondock anyways. And then yep. you can only last as long as your fresh tank lasts. So in this particular case, it would take a longer time after you return from boondocking to replenish your fresh tank before you can go out and boondock again. But you surely can boondock on it because boondocking yep. doesn't have a fresh water supply anyways. Yep. Uh, and one of the, somebody had mentioned to me before, well, what do you do with the brine water? It's going to fill up your gray tank when you're boondocking. Like, well, but you don't have fresh water there to fill up and produce your brine, your RO water anyway. So, uh, you, you're, there's nothing to produce. There's yeah, nothing there's to waste. Nothing to produce. Um, and again, Let's Michael, see. it's not brine. Brine is salt water. Oh, I'm sorry. You're correct. Wastewater. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, one question came in uh, talk about using a water softener before the RO system uh, it's really there's really no reason That's for right. it the RO yeah. or the softener doesn't actually take anything out it just replaces one ion with another so the total dissolved solids going into your RO plant however you have that set up is still going to be exactly the same whether it's softened or not the problem with softening is then you have another set of uh, you know, resin bed that you have to maintain and regenerate. Um, and that's actually what pushed me to the RO system. We were staying in Las Vegas and I was having to regenerate our softener every single week. And while the process is not arduous or, you know, it's, it doesn't take that long, um, doing it every week got really old. Uh, so I went to the RO system to completely eliminate the need for the softener. Uh, so yeah. in, in my opinion, you you definitely don't need to and almost certainly don't want to soften the water before it goes into the RO. It's not gaining There's, you anything. It doesn't make any sense. You're not, you're gain, not gaining anything. Yep. Arnie asked, um, with all the discussion about water filtering and sanitation, should, he, should they trust the RV park water? Um, that depends on where you are. Currently yeah. where we are in upstate New York, the water is great. I mean, the, the water supply yeah. from the county the park is getting is really good water. I mean, for the most part. However, if you're in Yuma, Arizona, no, you can't you can't touch the no. water coming out of the taps there. You've got to process. You got to they they actually tell you you have to drink bottled water. Yep. You know, I don't actually want that water in Yuma going through my motor coach. It's that bad. Yeah, and the worst I've actually seen was in Rio Doso, New Mexico. Um, they were on a well water system, and because of that area, the way the rocks and everything in that area. The, I, I got warned before we went there. So as soon as we pulled in and I started producing water, I thought, well, let me go check, you know, because everybody's warned me about how bad it is. Let me check and see what it is. And I went to my TDS meter and it said 130. And I thought, oh, well, that's great. 130 parts per million. That's actually really good water comparatively. And then I noticed there was this extra little indicator that I'd never noticed before on my TDS meter. And it said 10x. So it was actually 1,300 parts per million coming into the coach. Uh, so it, it was really, really bad. Um, and with that level of um, total dissolved solids, the RO membranes can only do so much. Um, yeah. Mine, instead of producing 10 to 12 parts per million, which is pretty common for me, uh, I was producing 110 parts per million. So it was helping a lot. You know, it was a 10x reduction, but it wasn't, able to get all of it out like it normally would be it, it was just too much right. yeah in some parts of the country it's just bad and um that's one of the reasons we started off with water purification because that will it's just that understand water purification you can't run full force it it, it has to come out yeah. a, it's a it's a very dense filtration system very dense um microscopic um uh, and yeah. that gets rid of everything in the water. And so therefore it has a low flow rate. So you can't use it to feed your entire your coach. That's why it's usually used as a tap on top of, you know, next to your main tap on your main sink, yep. for example. So, um, we have another question Hector, here. Uh, 
Hector, um, this is not uh, in regards to buying a DI system. This is a talk on reverse osmosis. Uh, the DI system, I would look at. However, you wouldn't want to. You either want to go look at um, Simple Chuck or you want to look at CR Spotless. Those are the two Munkel yep. and I both have used. Uh, uh, we both. I have see. videos on those. We have a question: uh, Are we doing anything to reduce the acidity of the RO water? So, when I first put mine in, I did. I used a what's called a pH neutralizer cartridge. And it actually uh, goes through a dissolvable media and that dissolving media corrects for the acidity of RO water. Um, however, because it's a dissolving media, it also puts in some particular back into the water that you produce. The theory and the reason why some people would do that is the acidity will actually uh, deteriorate the water fittings in your coach if you have metal water fittings. So I thought I was doing the best thing for the coach at that point, but uh, I did some more phone calls and, and did some more research. And I actually talked to Aqua Hot, for example, who use metal fittings. Um, they assured me at that time, at least, that there was no risk of RO water doing any damage to the, uh, to the actual Aqua Hot itself. So um, after I was pretty much depleted on that pH neutralizer, I took that out entirely. Um, so I no longer do anything uh, specific to pH, or yeah, neutralizing the pH. Uh, again, some companies, some bottled water companies, they actually add minerals back in for taste only. Reverse mm -hmm. osmosis is used in most purification systems in regard, or excuse me, bottled water systems. Again, grab a bottled water and take a look at the label. It will tell you how it's how it's made. They have to, and some of them will actually say minerals added back in for for taste only because people aren't used to pure water. Yep. So, um, in this photo, John, just uh, real quick. Sorry. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> this was oh, the sure. canister uh, I had ran it through before. And now when, uh, I've taken that out and I put the UV uh, sanitizing light in in its place. So that is empty because I hadn't put the canister in it yet, but that's what that was for. Uh, but again, I, I, don't, I don't see any real benefit to it uh, in modern day coaches. And no, John, we will not be the only two RVers left be, uh, the rest of you, you will not die from bad water. We're just giving you an example of what our water system is and how Brendan and I switched and Michael from pur purified water to RO and why we did it in our motor coach. It might not be a solution for you. Uh, it may not be advantageous for you. Uh, we did it for two reasons. One is, well, because it's 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 better we believe for the coach overall and we can use any tap we want for for clean water anytime and for really the <laughs> we can we can we can wash our cars and our motor coach and not have to worry about drying it now on that note um, because people are probably wondering gosh you know do you run out of water i can tell you personally and michael probably can back me up on this i have washed my motor coach washed our car both of us have taken showers, and Brenda has done a couple loads of laundry, and we didn't run out of wash out of, out of fresh water the entire time. Yep. Yeah, I've done the same thing. Um, uh, I have gotten it down to like the ten percent level, um, but that it builds up at um, anywhere from six to eight and a half gallons of water per hour of production. Uh, so you end up building that water back up, and as you're using it the system is producing water on top of what you're using already anyway. Um, so it's, uh, you would have to really be trying to exhaust your water supply. And keep in mind too, our Tiffins have 90 gallon fr freshwater tanks. Uh, yes. So that's, that's what we're working off of. Any concerns about using other metals other than stainless steel? No, not really a concern of mine. No. Anything that's uh, safe for potable water should be relatively safe with the RO system. I do see in chat, uh, Stephen says that uh, someone from Aqua Hot told him the opposite, that they do not recommend RO use in the Aqua Hot. Um, in that instance, I would, I would run the pH neutralizer then. Um, your information is probably newer than mine. Mine is about five years old. So, um, yeah, definitely go with what you're told by the people who run the systems at the time that you're getting ready to do your install 
we're only operating off of what we've been told. Well, understand, uh, Aquad is, I mean, our system is the 450D systems. Um, I have to think that all the Aquad systems are more or less the same in regards to fittings and what have you. So I'm not sure. It all depends, I guess, who you talk to. The guy you might have been talking yeah. to might not understood what you were actually asking. Um, because yeah, our own water is just pure water. There's nothing there to hurt anything that yeah, I can Yeah, it is of. more acidic. Um, so it can leach chemicals out of uh, connectors if they're if they're not high grade connectors, uh, generally speaking. So you you can do harm to connectors and leach minerals out of them. Um, the other side of it too well, is the likelihood, yeah, the longevity of doing that in any time frame that you're or anyone else could be using your coach, it, you'll likely have another failure before that would actually cause any problems. That would be my bet. And 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 yeah. like I had mentioned, that's why you don't want to drink DI water because it'll pull the minerals out of your body and hurt you. Um, yep. Same idea is, I guess, here in, in regards to pulling the minerals out of a metal pipe, if you will, or a metal fitting um, because the RO water is so clean. It's not super clean. It's not... It's not it's not deionized water, or it's not uh, what it's not. Um, um, what's the what's? Uh, Sorry, I wasn't. Dei <laughs> no, deionized de water and pu not purified. The uh, the other one you can't drink. Um, oh, nope. Um, geez, I said it before. Why can't I think about it? You don't want to drink di water, and you definitely don't want to drink. Um, Oh, gosh. Why am I drawing Sorry, a blank? it's not coming to me either. Oh, anyways. Anyway. You don't want to... Uh, <laughs> distilled water. Distilled. You don't want to drink distilled water uh, for actually, the same reasons. Actually, distilled water is okay. Um, oh. With with after treatment. Sorry. Let me correct <laughs> that. Yes, with after treatment. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not concerned about anything with my aqua hot, just so you know. I don't I didn't have yeah. any concerns with that. And people have been running reverse osmosis systems coach wide uh in their RVs for a very long time. Um they haven't just started selling these things. These have been no. around from R V um from from our the R V water filter store for a very long time. Yep. Uh so I think we're kinda coming to the end of uh our talk here any anything else uh you want to cover david um not that i know of john says he mike he hasn't received an email from you to get in touch with you i don't know what that's about but <laughs> yeah that must be something yep. else um uh he gave me his email address on one of our live drives i and uh it uh, completely slipped my mind so i'll john i'll get that out to you here uh, after this show And looking at, yeah, Robert, you were correct, distilled. Right? Very good. <laughs> um, do you know the typical pH of your water? I do not offhand. I do have a water test kit, however. In fact, RV Water Filter Store sells a test kit. They are actually one company that sells this special test kit um, that you can get from them to test your water and have it sent in for a full sample reading. I don't know the pH of my water offhand. I do only know what my meters are telling me in regards to the parts per million and i'm running yeah. currently um uh two parts per million of of uh minerals if you will in the water yeah my ph is down to about six and a half um the time i tested that the incoming water was at seven and a half so it was reducing uh the ph by basically one point uh toward the acidic end of uh the ph spectrum but that was a good question I just haven't yep. I just haven't tested mine because and the reason I haven't tested mine is because where we currently are and where we're going to be going to next um, I know the water is really good uh, to in general we'd really mm -hmm. we don't really need it to use anything at the park we're at but we do because it's the same water yeah. all the time no matter we go no matter where we go now it's always going to be the same yep and relatively speaking safe um, yes. And relatively. a lot of RV parks use municipal water supplies, and most municipal water is required to be safe to drink. Uh, so you shouldn't have any concerns in those environments unless maybe you're in Flint, Michigan, where it's lead pipes, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Or, yeah. and then a, a lot of other parks will use well water. And 
depending on the local municipality, they may be required to maintain a certain standard with their uh, water system, or they may be able to do kind of whatever they want uh, within reason. So you have no idea when, depending no on where idea. you're going in a water at, at RV park, you don't know what their restrictions are yep. or what they're doing or where they're pulling their water from. And most of them, unless it's really egregious, will never tell you not to drink the water. <laughs> they're not going to, yeah. you know, put out there that, uh, yeah, who would want to go to a water park that says don't drink the water. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but in municipalities, they'll tell you that like Yuma, it's all over the place. Don't drink the water. Yep. Um, and they actually have water stations. You go and you fill up, you know, five gallon jugs of water and stuff like that to drink out of, to drink from. Um, yep. It all depends on the part of the country you are and how on how hard the water is. Um, I mean, it can be anywhere from Yuma or it can be all the way up in, um, uh, geez, uh, Maine. Maine. Uh, we were in Maine and and uh, they they we were. I, I, a guy went to wash his I was part of a caravan and a guy went to wash his coach when we stopped and I, I yelled out stop and he's like what's wrong he's spraying his coach down with water I said don't do that the water here is super hard and it was so warm out at the time when the guy turned by the time I talked to him about it and he turned around mm. and looked at his coach it was white I mean that's how fast yeah. it dried and it was it was just all hard water it was yep. so bad but in any case Hey, Michael, we've been online here for an hour and 15 minutes. I think it's time that we sit, we end this, and uh, yep. we'll have to come up with some other topic to talk about someday together. Absolutely. Real soon, yeah. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you do, please click subscribe, and uh, that will be actually subscribing to OutsiderBubble.com, which is uh, right now where we normally stream from, um, only because of our viewerships and the subscribers that Outside Our Bubble has. So we thank you very much to all of you who are subscribers and those of you who will become subscribers. Michael will be joining this channel uh, regularly uh, as hopefully yep. as we progress with some other techie talk. Um, because, of course, if we started our own channel, we wouldn't have enough viewers yet. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to subscribe to our channel, um, both David and I, uh, we travel full time in our motor coaches, live full time in our motor coaches with our lovely wives and our darling pets. And um, we broadcast live as we drive down the highway uh, as as good as our Internet will allow. So um, if you like our content uh, or any of that, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. It's uh, just turtle herding, just like uh, my my little lower uh, portion there on the right there right there <laughs> and then on david's as well uh outsiderbubble.com if you've not been to his website or our website uh, please feel free yeah so um i'm just putting one link uh somebody asked what water pump again that we used and i'm going to post the one that i have, i currently use and michael has used in the past um yep. So I'll just post that. And other than that, uh, thank you again uh, for subscribing and joining us tonight. Um, and we're going to let you go. I'm David Bob from OutsiderBubble.com. And I'm Michael Kidd from TurtleHerding.com. And together, and together we're, we're Turtle Bubbles. No, 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 yeah, no, no. Not that oh, one. Turtle no. Bubbles. She gets it all. That's right. <laughs> turtle Bubbles. Turtle Bubbles. Any case, you guys take care. Keep safe. We'll see you on the flip side. Be safe yeah. on the road. Remember, hey, we're only as safe as you guys out there driving. Does that make sense? kind of there's a lot more rvers these days out there so um just uh take care on the road be careful with what you're driving because you may not be used to what you're driving these days <laughs> yep i didn't know where i was going with that take care keep safe Me we'll either. see you on the road <laughs> bye-bye <laughs>